Hi everyone, me and my partner, Letrago Margie A. from BLIS3A, assigned to discuss about measuring, evaluating, coordinating organizational performances. Measuring and evaluating. When we say measuring, it refers to the process of delegating a numerical index to the object in a meaningful and consistent manner. While evaluating, it is the process through which it is testified that whether the objectives are achieved and if so, to what extent. It also testifies whether the resources spent have properly resulted in the attainment of the desired objectives. During the recent past, with dramatic shifts in the nature of information access and information services, coordinating and control aspects of an information services organization have become more pervasive, committing personnel at all levels to accountability and services quality. Input measures including both resources input and activities input. Resources input include budget, staff, facilities, materials, and equipment, while activities input include programs developed to fulfill identified goals. Second, the output measures. The various products or program activities measured by accomplishments. This is usually counted in numbers, like for example, number of books circulated, number of reference questions answered, and etc. Third is outcomes assessments. The benefits of changes for individuals or populations during or after participating in activities, including, for example, acquired knowledge or skill, change attitudes or values, improvement in status or conditions, and so forth. They relate to inputs in order to identify and establish best practices for future services. There are also techniques for evaluating activities, developing standards. Standards are established criteria against which subsequent performance can be compared and evaluations can be made. Most often, they are developed or at least devised from organizational goals. Standards fall into two basic classes. First, those relating to material and performance including quality, quantity, cost, and time. Second one is those relating to moral aspects including the organization's value system and ethical criteria that may be used to establish some sort of code of ethics. Librarians and other information services workers are now also seeking ways of demonstrating deeper quality control along with that quantitative data. Evaluation, accountability, and cost measurement are now intertwined in every aspect of the organization's work and solid performance indicators are required to provide some basis for making some decisions in the strategic planning process. Key Performance Indicator Performance indicators, the process should be quantitative or qualitative or both, with specific measures expressed in order to determine success of that performance over time. Outcomes are the ways in which library users are changed as a result of their contact with libraries, resources, and programs. Coordinating and controlling. Obviously, the two are interrelated. Effective coordinating within an organization depends on the types of controls that are in place. Coordinating is the act, and controls are the means that provide information for decision making. So, the coordinating pertains to an end, whereas controlling is the means. The first is concerned with events and the other with facts, one is analytical and operational, concerned with what was and is, whereas the other deals with expectations. Controls, wherever they are found and whatever they control, involve three basic steps. First, establishing standards. Second, measuring performance against standards. And lastly, correcting deviations. 
International Organization for Standardization specifies a set of 29 indicators grouped in three areas. First is the user satisfaction. Second, public services, which include general indicators as well as specify indicators on providing documents, retrieving documents, lending documents, document delivery from external sources, inquiry and reference services, information searching, and facilities. Third, technical services, including indicators in the area of acquiring, processing, and cataloging documents. Correcting divisions. Correcting any divisions from the norm is a vital step in the coordinating process. This correction can be achieved by exercising organizational prerogative, like for example, in the case of personnel, by reassignment of clarification of duties, by additional staffing, by better selection and training of staff, or by some other method of restaffing. Corrections also can be made by adjusting goals, developing new or alternative plans, or altering ways of doing things. Correcting division may be also expressed in a very simplified diagram that shows how the information flow makes possible the self-regulation of the system. Here is the figure 18.1. Evaluating efforts. Evaluation and assessment of services is a complex process that attempts to identify areas needing improvement with an aim toward taking corrective action. It is not a one-time thing or even a sometime thing, but rather an ongoing review of operations. There are at least three factors to be considered in evaluation. First, the input to the service or more specifically the application of resources necessary for information services to occur including staff, materials, space, and equipment. Second, the output should be considered in terms of the quantities of output of the services and how that can be cost factored, including price, timeliness, availability, and accessibility, all contributing to the value of the services. Third, the outcomes include such elements as saving time, improving productivity, improving quality of life and work, and enhancing timeliness, adding value. It is the relationship of those measures that begins to illustrate the usefulness and importance of libraries that has some bearing on justifying the budget and resources in the effort to improve both personal and professional lives. Tools of Coordination the function of coordinating and controlling so that good decisions can be made requires accurate and timely information for the control and monitoring of specific kinds of data. This process has become heavily dependent upon technology to enhance efficient information gathering, the process of locating, organizing, transferring, and using information expertise within the organization made more efficient and effective by use of technology fits appropriately in any discussion of tools for decision-making. Cost-Benefit Analysis A cost-benefit evaluation can be conducted to determine whether the potential worth or value of a service is greater than or less than the cost of providing it. Developing a cost-benefit analysis process need not be an intimidating undertaking. In its simplest form, cost-benefit analysis is little more than a formalized approach for identifying and weighing the advantages and drawbacks associated with a decision. In general, cost-benefit analysis provides a useful tool for evaluating the efficiency of a regulation. Cost-benefit analysis can be defined as a systematic approach which seek to determine whether or not a particular program or proposal is justified, rank various alternatives appropriate to a given set of objectives, and ascertain the optimal course of action to attain these objectives. Benchmarking 
benchmarking in its early stages of development was more commonly identified as a total quality management tool used to measure and compare the work processes in one's organization with those in other organizations. It has since came into its own in libraries as they recognize the benefits of using it in measurement of activities. A benchmark is a reference point or standard against which progress or achievements can be assessed. The goal of benchmarking is to increase performance by identifying libraries with best practices as partners, measuring and comparing a selected work process against others in the pair group, and emulating or adapting the identified best practices for the local library or information center situation. The several types of benchmarking are being used in libraries. First, the internal benchmarking. It is used to measure similar activities performed by different units. Second, the functional benchmarking. It comparing and organization's practices with those identified as leaders within the same service area. Third, the generic benchmarking which compares an organization's functions or practices that cross different types of organizations. Lastly, the competitive benchmarking, which compasses units performance of the service or process with that of a competitor. The five stages have been proposed in the benchmarking process are measuring services and selecting the aspects to the benchmark, and identifying benchmarking partners because the goal, aims, and objectives must be identifying the best practice to be discussed later because the best practice varies from one group to another, and changing procedures and features of services based upon those best practices identified, and lastly, measuring the new approaches to service to determine the impact. Program, evaluation, and review techniques is a common sense tool that helps remind people of the preparation work needed before an event and helps them check if the task will be completed on schedule. Program evaluation and review techniques is a technique of control in the planning process that is highly applicable to library operations. PERT originally was developed by the U.S. Navy Special Projects and is sometimes called the critical path method. The figure suggests that there are two paths to be taken, say, from the time the idea of a new library is formulated until the building is ready to occupancy. O represents events and represents activities. Times would be assigned for each activity, say, three weeks between events four and five, one week between six and seven. As illustrated, either path one, two, three, four, five, nine, ten, and eleven, or path one, two, three, six, seven, eight, ten, and eleven can be taken. If time is of the essence, the shorter route might be be more desirable. Of the four paths illustrated, which 1, 2, 5, 8, and 1, 3, 5, 8, and 1, 4, 6, 8, and 1, 2, 7, 8, the longest path with work going forth on all four paths simultaneously is 1, 2, 7, and 8. This path takes five weeks to complete and is the critical path that controls the schedule more or less for the whole project. Balance Scorecard The balance scorecard process has been adapted by some libraries to integrate financial and non-financial measures as well as internal and external performance measures. The balance scorecard is a survey instrument that focuses upon a chosen number of measurements identified in a strategic plan process in order to measure the organizational performance. The system consists of the processes. First, translating the vision into operational goals. Next, communicating the vision and link it to individual performance. Third, develop a service plan. Fourth, provide feedback and adjust accordingly. Most evaluations in this process fall into four areas, users, the finance, 
the internal process, and learning, and the future. LiveQual Plus is one measurement activity that has been developed to solicit, track, understand, and act upon users' options of service quality. It has emerged as both a process and a tool that enables institutions to address service quality gaps between their expectations and the perceived service delivery program. It is a tool that attempts to measure library users' perceptions of service quality and identify gaps between desired, perceived, and minimum expectations of service. The goal of LibQual Plus are to foster a culture of excellence in providing library service, help libraries better understand user perceptions of library service quality, collect and interpret library user feedback systematically over time, provide libraries with comparable assessment information from peer institutions, identify best practices in library service, and enhance library staff members' analytical skills for interpreting and acting on data. It specifies a set of 29 indicators group in the following areas. The user satisfaction, public services, which includes general indicators as well as specific indicators on providing documents, retrieving documents, lending documents, document delivery from external sources, inquiry and reference services, information searching, and facilities. Technical services including indicators in the area of acquiring, processing, and cataloging documents. Decision Support System The Decision Support System is an interactive software-based system that is useful for decision makers in the process of compiling useful information from raw data, documents, personal knowledge, and business models to identify and solve problems and make decisions. Its type are including executive support systems, Executive Information Systems, Intelligent Information System, Organizational Support Systems, and Controlling Information Systems. Time and Motion Study Motion studies enable a library system to record in flowchart form the present method of doing things to analyze the method's effectiveness and from this analysis to improve the method. The new method of doing things can then be timed to report the performance standard. Time studies complement motion studies in determining performance standards. Time and motion studies have been and are being done in libraries particularly relating to routine tasks such as shelving books, inputting data into online files, checking in periodicals, or preparing items for the bindery. Operations Research Two terms that are closely related and often used interchangeably are operations research and system analysis. Actually, the latter emerges from the former. Operations research today is largely identified with specific techniques such as linear programming, querying theory analysis, dynamic programming, statistical models, Monte Carlo randomizing methods, gaming and game theory, and other computer simulation model. Operations research normally operates in four distinctive stages. First, description of the system being considered, especially by means of mathematical models and computer simulations. Second, measurement using objective data wherever this can be obtained. Third, evaluation, the presentation of relevant information to the system manager to aid in making decisions between different courses of action. And lastly, operational control, assisting the development of ways and means of achieving the objectives aimed for over a period of time. Just as management information system was reinvented in the form of decision support system, so has the concept of information resource management been subsumed under the concept of knowledge management, a developing system that attempts to capture the knowledge and expertise of human capital as well as documents, repositories, routines, processes, practices, and norms within and flowing into the organization by creating a computerized system to capture both the implicit and explicit knowledge within the organization. Monitoring programs for result and accountability. Monitoring is a continuous management function 
aimed primarily at providing managers with regular feedback and early indications of progress or lack thereof in the achievement of intended results within the organization. Monitoring Monitoring tracks the actual performance against what was planned or expected according to predetermined standards. Accountability. All types of library information centers must demonstrate a value of service or value-added aspect to the larger organization of which they are part and to their constituencies. Accountability measures are intended to provide quality assurance and timeliness of program performance.